Hiya, today I'm in a Honda CRV and the timing chain's rattling when you start the car. It's actually rattling all the time, but rattles worse before it gets oil pressure. Uh, it's now not even running. It, it starts and then cuts out. And the fault code is... Uh, I'll show you the fault code because I can't remember exactly what it was. I don't know if you'll hear it rattling when I'm in here. Actually, it's shaking the car really bad, and it cuts out, so it's getting worse. I'm going to check for fault codes. We have the fault codes here, crankshaft, position sensor, A circuit, range performance, camshaft position sensor. So the cam and crank sensors, I don't know if somebody's unplugged them at some time, but I don't think that it's... They're both not working because the car actually started. I'll see what else I can find. Okay, what I've done with this Foxwell is gone out of the OBD2 and I've gone in and chose the Honda. And looking at this, I've still got a crank sensor, crankshaft position sensor, range performance. It's not a circuit fault though. I've got a camshaft sensor and crankshaft sensor incorrect phase detected. And I think that's going to be down to the timing chain that I could hear stretched. So I'm going to change that out and hopefully it'll fix it. The misfires, it does seem to misfire. I think that could be something else. I'll come back to that later once I've changed the chain. I've moved the car so that it's safer. It's on a flatter surface. I've got an axle stand under there as well as a jack. Took the wheel off. Removed a little bit of the plastic trim so I can get to the pulley. Now what I'm going to do is just take off the engine cover. I'm going to have to take out the coils. Lift the engine cover off, take the fan belt off, and see what else I need to move to get the side of the engine case off to get to the timing chain. Once I took the bolts out of the engine cover, it was a bit of a tight fit under this power steering hose, but just with a bit of forcing it out of there, I got it out. Now, the thing I was going to show you was down here, I don't know if you can see that now, chain. You can't see that, how slack it is. Tell you what, I'll take, take that bit off and show you. Right, now you can see the chain. That's the slackness in it. So I'm thinking that the engine was being switched off by the ECU or something when it realized the cow and crank correlation was so far out to preserve the engine. That's pretty bad. This is the setup that I've got to undo the bottom pulley. The bottom pulley and the crank pulley there, the bolt has a 19 millimeter and it's tight so I bought this this bit here that just I had to hammer it in because of the rust once I hammered it in and I was happy it wasn't going to slip I put the breaker bar on with the extension going to an axle stand and this big bar and uh, it did go, it went with a big crack, but I couldn't film it at the same time because I was using both hands. But uh, that's definitely a good tool to, to get if you're needing to undo these. See in there, that's what's holding it. It's like a spline on the inside edge. So that's why holding the pulley was going to stop the crankshaft from turning. It's got a keyway as well. 
It's an unusual idea. Last time I did one, I took the starter motor out and locked it up with a screwdriver. This worked better. It's just looking at this pillow, you now it's off. Even though it's got splines, they're not actually splined onto the crank. It's just the Woodruff key, the keyway that goes in there. can see it right there. Right, that's what it was. And it sits in the end of the shaft right there. The splines aren't splines like I was saying. That's just how it looked. On here, they do, they're not actually splines. So now I'm going to take out the three bolts that go through from the bottom, through the sump, and then all the rest. Any bolts that are going through the case, this way. I'm going to take all them out and take the case off and get a better look at the chain. Once I got all the bolts out, this just came off. There is one bolt that was hiding right there. I used a mirror to find it. So there's all the bolts that you'll need to remove. And the ones on the engine mount also have to come out. And then the three that come in from the bottom. Once you've got all them out, it's still tight. I had to wedge a screwdriver gently between the, the sump to help it break free because the, the bonding was so tight. And pry it off at the top. Now that I've done it, If you can see that. There you go. Bonnet tool cable in the way. Can't really show you what I'm wanting to, but it is the timing's moved. Right, it's both it's out. There should be a line across those two. Into pulleys. There's a line and they both point to each other. There's a yellow dot and a yellow dot on each sprocket. And they should be pointing to each other in the north. And these lines look like they should be at the top. So they ladder to the top of the sprocket. Which again you can't see there it is. There's one on this. This one's just a dot on that side. And they look like they should be at 12 o'clock, but they're, they're past it. They're not quite right. Too far to the right. I'd have thought if anything the chain would have stretched, it would have been more the other way. You know, like it would stretch going down as the bully's trying to turn the crank like that. Going this way. Going clockwise, I would have thought that they would stretch and then be too far back, but they're not. It's the other way. It's just the way it is. So I'm gonna put the new chain on it. This is the this is the hydraulic tension out, and I've took the bolts out. Right, so this would have been pushing onto the rail, or the, the chain guide that comes down, plastic guide pushes on the chain. What I wanted to say was, when you take these out, some cars that I've done, all the inside bits here can fall down into the, uh, into the sump, and you have to fish it out. Uh, this one's okay, that it'll stay together, but... I thought it was worth mentioning in case you're going to take yours off and bits spring out. Now I've got the new chain on. Uh, all the lines line up. It should line up with something. There's one in between those two. Down there. And they are next to each other. See those two? Sorry, that's not a good picture, but those two lines 
that's facing each other. Okay. There's a line here. It's a little dot on this one actually. Can't show you because the angle of the chain, but that black, see how it's a gray or black, whatever color. There's a little dot under that link on the chain. And the same for the one on the back. So the, they are in the right place. And the two at the center point each other as well. And then here, we've also got So we've got there where the green mark is at the top. That arrow points to another arrow that you can't see because of the angle I'm at. But it's right there, there's an arrow on the back sprocket. The front sprocket has, with the front chain, has another black, um, a black link, and that's on a dot that's on that uh, sprocket there the front sprocket, so everything's in time. I'm going to turn it round twice. Obviously not had it running yet, so there's no oil pressure, but already the chain's a lot tighter. So what I'm going to do now is put the top piece on here, the bit that I took off before. I'll put that back on and then I can turn it around two turns and recheck the alignment. I use that as well. Check was that TDC. I mean this tool in here. Now I've turned it round on the crankshaft two rotations clockwise. That's the direction of the rotation of this engine. I got this lined up again at the bottom. At the top, it's Checking it on the piston with this is a secondary way of checking it. I've still got the 13 stripes that I had down there when I started it. And these, let's see if I can zoom in on this again like I did before. My hands aren't steady, but I can get a light in the right place now because I put the phone in the way that I'm filming it on. Those two stripes are lining up, those two sprockets, the teeth on the sprockets, I mean. Another thing is, I'll just zoom back out again. Right, these lines here that we have on the sprocket, oh, it's hard to see it. One second. Right. Anyway, there's the line. Right. That arrow wasn't in line with this. There's the dot on the sprocket there. That dot lined up with a colored link. What you'll notice this time is that the colored link is no longer there. It's changed position. That's the same with this one at the back. Okay. That's got whatever it is there. There's the dot on the back one, which is the exhaust. But it doesn't line up with the link anymore, but that's okay. The links are only there so that when you're putting the chain on, it lines up for you putting the chain on. When you turn it two turns round, if those colored links don't line up, it doesn't mean you need to take the chain off and do it again because something's gone wrong. It's just how it is so it doesn't line up in the same part on the chain every time so the chain lasts longer it's a deliberate thing they're just used for putting the chain on and it's the same if it's timing belts um, so that's that all seems okay okay I stopped filming but basically what I've done is put all the covers on and tried to start the car, but I didn't record the last bit. Uh, it was just the same way it came off. The main thing I was showing was the chain, that it was out of sync and 
where the timing marks were when it went together. That's all done now. As you can see it's built up. The problem is it doesn't run. It starts and then cuts out. And I, I was looking at the fault codes again. And I have one of the fault codes I had before. Crankshaft sensor range performance P0336. I was hoping the chain was going to sort out both faults, but the chain was really slack and needed done. So, to check that the crankshaft sensor is working, so I've just put the scope onto the crank and the two camshafts. Now start the car. See how it stopped running after a while? Um, that, that's what's happening and that's what was happening before, except now I don't have a rattly chain. So it says it's the crankshaft, but here I've got the yellow one is the crank and the red one is the uh, exhaust and that's the inlet. So the crankshaft, if we watch it again, I'm still getting movement there after the car stops. So, waiting for the car to stop. See, the car stops, and then you still get a bit of a signal. So I don't think it's losing the signal and then stopping the car. Okay. One thing I am noticing that we get, like, um... I'll try and pause it and show you. I'll do it again. I'll just pause that. Right. See here we've got the exhaust camshaft and this one of the teeth has an extra um an extra tooth and it kind of lines up with where on the crankshaft we've got the extra tooth the here. And the teeth pull the 5 volts down to ground. All of these three sensors have got 12 volts at one wire, 0 volts at another, and 5 volts at another. And the, the volts comes down from, from the engine ECU, the engine computer. And when one of the teeth passes the, the sensors, it pulls it down to 0. These two are in line, but I'm not seeing an identification on what I've got as the intake one on the blue one. That that just seems to have the same, it's almost like it's just looking for speed rather than identification. Or maybe try and record it so I can play it back and get a better look. Storage, so put it on there. Start. Okay. I had to turn the key right off and back on. See, it just stops and then they stop after. I'll just turn the ignition off for now. I'm going to go back, right, and I want to play it, let's see if I get one of those, I got it going slow, <laughs> really slow, it's actually just showing me the last bit there, oh no, that's because it wouldn't start the first time, you see like there's those two teeth, I'm looking for an identification in the intake, maybe it doesn't have one. In which case it must just be using it for speed. There isn't one. Should there be one? So the car stops first, we see that 
the car, the car stops and then as it slows down it loses those So this is what I found out. I, I was trying to start it, but I had to turn the key all the way back off and then back on again to get it to run. Yeah, there's no extra identification unless one of those teeth is slightly wider than the other teeth or one narrower. It just doesn't have a double tooth on it. They all look the same. You see the bottom one, the one that says it's got a fault, that's there after the engine stops, it's still producing a signal. So I don't think it's an input to the engine computer. Okay, so I'm going to check a few things now. I'm going to go in, it's got to be losing something, spark or fuel, so I'm going to go and just check those two things now and see which one it's losing first. Um, if any, before the engine stops, I'll just set that up. Right, so I've connected up an extension lead so I can read from the plug. Don't think I had that all the way in there. Hopefully that's a better fit. It's not great though, it's like it's going to fall out. Got the HT pickup, and um, that's on cylinder one. Also on cylinder one, inject it I'm into the control wire. So the one with the injector is going through a 20 to 1 attenuator. So now I'm going to, I've already cranked it to check that my speeds and everything were okay. But that's what we're seeing. The point of this was to see, does it stop firing first, or do I lose a spark first? Because I'm still getting the signal, and I am triggered on channel 2 still. So, I'll do that again. What are we seeing that's different? Well, the first one that looks like it died out there was maybe the uh, the injector it seems to have finished first. But what I'm going to do is change the trigger to channel one because that thing's running all the time. That's still running after those two, so it means I should be able to. So I've checked the inputs on the crank sensors. Now I'm trying to check the outputs. That's what this is about. Which one goes first? There. I'm going to record that again and then I can show you what i just seen. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's definitely cuts the fuel and the spark whilst it's got the input. So it's being controlled. It stops being controlled. So now I'm going to record this. just tells me once I press yes, I can't change anything. Okay. Hold on. There we go. So now I've started it. Right, here we go. I don't know if you have glare on here, but I'm going to play that back. And what I think I've seen on the other one when it cut out, I had two injection sparks at once. So we're going to stop that. That's okay. And I'll play it back. And I'll get ready to pause it when I see the... I didn't see it that one, that time. Try it again.
Missing a bit there. I'll do it again. I'll record it again. Right, so we're in to record. Let's go. Kind of missing a bit. It was showing it better before. I maybe have to put my trigger onto one of the other ones. see it. Let's put the trigger on to something else. Trigger on to three. Let's see what happens now. I'm not seeing anything because I got it stopped. Now I'm ready. I've seen it now, but it does look like the injector is stopping first. But what I've seen before was two injectors right right next to each other. But the injector could just be the timing. But I'll try it again and see. See, it stops. Stop recording there. I wanted it to keep going. Mm -hmm. What if I put it onto auto? Still, right, still didn't see it, but I did before, I saw two, two injectors firing together. But it's definitely losing the spark and the fuel, I would say, at the same time. I'm still looking at a way to see what's stopping first, so what I've done here is put in a pressure transducer, a homemade one, into cylinder one. I've got the spark going through a spark tester. Um, so I can see when it's firing. And I've unplugged the, um, I've unplugged the, the wire going to the injector so that I don't flood out the cat. Um, I'm still getting a reading of that because I put a noid light in the end, so it's just going to fire. It's just going to light that up instead of firing the injector. Um, the only problem I've got with these is they keep falling out of here. So if I go back to here, I've got it set up. Just starting it now. See what drops out first. Kind of missed, missed the bit that I wanted to see. Um, I don't know, would it help if I put more time up there? 50 millis, 100 milliseconds per division. What are we missing first? I 
It seems to stop them both right there. I'll just record it this time and then show you what I saw. It seems to stop the spark and the um stop the spark and the fuel at the same time. Just gonna check that that wire's not come out. No, it's still in there, right? So here we go. Same test as before. And okay, recording it. Oh, it's not. Nice. Have to turn the key right off. There. Right. They should help me be able to get it back to the point that it stopped. So if I go and play that. Hopefully, we can see it. It is a delay because I was cranking it for a while. But it is playing it, I think. Yeah, this is where it was cranking. I had to turn the key off. No, I'm not getting all the image here, but you can see the sparks seem to be the first one, but it could just be the time. It shut them both off at the same time. It's just between the uh, coil doing its next fire, so it looked like the coil dropped out first. If that makes any sense. I'll stop it at the right place. So this is just seeing what's dropping out. It needs a spark, it needs air, it needs fuel, it needs compression. What's going first? I think I missed it. I'll see if I can back it up a little bit. If I back that up a bit, I might catch it. No, it's not. It just shows me nothing there, so I'll do it again. I'll play it again and get ready to. I'll get ready to stop it again. Oh, that's only showing me the last bit of what I did, so I've got to record it again. I think, what is it? No, it's playing it. So, when I get right near the end, let me just show you here. I'm not seeing the full injection spark. The eyes going up. There's the two injectors where it fires twice as well. Like I was saying before, I'd seen that. That's not right. So every once in a while, it's fired in twice. Getting an even, actually. I'm getting a spark near TDC. This is TDC because that's the compression. Spark, spark. And the injectors before halfway, just before. So it's injecting into the intake manifold just before it opens the intake valve. But look here, it's slowly moving off target. It's before the compression. Now it's firing before it again. It's firing way before. I think this is why it's just getting confused. I might have to recheck the timing. And pull it apart and recheck that. I was hoping I didn't have to. But I'd probably just have to. See when it gets far enough out of sync. You see what I mean here? I don't know if I can zoom in. I'll try. Um, I did say I can change it though once I get it on these settings. Let's try this. Yeah, the picture quality is not good like this, but there's the spark. No, I'm going to zoom back out. It didn't help me like that. You see here, 
compression, compression and it fires, compression, firing event. Got a slight raise there. Like it shut the exhaust valve and it starts going up again in the center. I know it's not good quality. I think it's maybe because I dropped my transducer. I don't, I don't think it's worked the same since, but it's still helping me out. See, it's sparking before it's even started compressing. And again there. If I could move it over a bit. Let's try and move it over. See here, there's the spark for the same cylinder, but it's here, it's way too far advanced, and we've had two injection fires there. So I'm just going to go in and check my timing marks. I hope they're okay, because it was a bit of a pig of a job to do. But, oh well. It does seem when it gets far enough out of sync that it just stops the spark and the fuel. See, I bring it over. Still got a spark there. But the spark's almost getting near to intake. You see it's moved that far over. I don't know if I'll catch another one. It's also putting out of sync when it's spraying the fuel. It's now spraying the fuel into the intake manifold, but it's spraying it right on, that would be the power stroke there, decompression. Uh, I forgot what the word is, but it's the power stroke. And they've both stopped. I think it's realized it's so far out of sync that it's just stopped firing. Okay, so my thoughts now are uh, the timing. I'm going to check the timing again. Uh, but I'm also thinking something's shifting, and that's, I think that's the computer controlling it. Uh, the mechanical side of the belt isn't shifting, um, so I'm still a bit confused and i got to think about this a bit more. The belt's not, the timing chain, I mean, the timing chain isn't moving, it's staying in the same sink, so if it's good enough to run for a few seconds, you'd think it would be good enough to run. Otherwise, if it was way off, it wouldn't run at all. But for some reason, it's choosing to adjust the timing, the ignition timing, and the injection timing. It's choosing to change that. So I think I'm going I'm to have to maybe start by rechecking my timing marks. For some reason, it's choosing to adjust it, and I don't know why yet. So... At least I've got a, a bit of a direction. Okay, so I've checked, I checked the timing again, just to be sure everything that I took apart was okay, and it is. So I'm happy with the timing. I didn't bother showing you that, because I didn't want the video to be too long, and it's already taken a bit longer than it should do. So the next thing I've done is decided the way the car stops, it was like it was losing power or something. It's like it's being switched off. It's not the ignition, because the lights are staying on on the ignition the whole time. And I went and checked at the ECU, that's just behind the glove box here. And I was checking for anything that stopped at the same time that the car stopped. If it was one of the power feeds that went away, or if it was um, the fuel injectors that stopped, or the coils that stopped first, or I was trying to figure out what it is, um, or fuel, the fuel pump relay, but I couldn't find any information on the card. I looked at the data that I usually use, and it didn't list anything for this engine, so I couldn't check the pin data at the ECU, and it didn't even have a wiring diagram. What I'm doing now is looking at the ECU pins, checking them, and when the car cuts out, 
I'm seeing if I was still getting a signal or if I still had power, so I wasn't losing the power that was making the car cut out. Was, I'll just show you. No. It's blue. Right now I'm on to the one that I see a problem with. It's battery voltage, and then when I start the car, it pulls it to ground. So it's the ECU. See that? This one stops exactly the same time that the engine stops. This goes back up to 12 volts. See that? I'll do it once more. When it goes up, there is a bit of a pattern at the top. But anyway, that's that's what I'm seeing there. And I needed to find out what this was. Was it was it controlling a relay that's part of the ECU or part of something else? Or was it a solenoid? There's something though that when it's working it pulls it down and as soon as this stops pulling it down, the car cuts out. So next I'm going to try and find out where that wire goes to. Okay, what I've got is a test light going to ground and this wire is back probed at the ECU that I was showing you before. It's still connected at the other end. I've just took this out of the multimeter. I'm going to touch it onto this test light. And I can hear a solenoid being activated, which is over here. See on the intake manifold. We've got an intake runner inside, and that's where the noise is coming from. If I put my hand on it and work the wires at the same time so that I ground out the control wire, I can feel it in there. What I found was that the two wires here, we've got, I think it was black with a yellow stripe and the red with the green stripe, uh, red with the blue stripe. Well, the power is coming in through the black wire and through the solenoid and it's getting grounded through the red one. So I could tell that when I unplugged it. Um, and the same thing here, if I check it here for power, the car dies as soon as it loses power right here. Okay, I'm going to start the car. Got no power there. This is the control side. As soon as the car stops, it goes back up to battery voltage. So we know we're on the control side. I'll just switch this over to the black and yellow wire. Battery power now. And start the car again. Actually bolted, and it stays there after the car cuts out. So we know it's definitely the same time this stops powering up, this solenoid stops being activated, that we have a problem. Now I've connected in a vacuum gauge, it's teed into here. This is where the, the vacuum solenoid was that controls the swirl flaps. So what I'm going to do is start the car. All the car's running because no vacuum. A little bit came in just before it stopped. A little bit of vacuum. And then it stopped. And it had more vacuum after it stopped. That's interesting. Okay, I'll do it once again and just check. Started. No vacuum whilst it runs. It lasts a little bit. As soon as it drops that... No, I gained a little bit of vacuum, I mean. And as soon as it did, the car cut out. After it cut out, it got more vacuum. 
Since it's happier when there's no vacuum, I'm just going to try it with no vacuum, but I've left this on just to uh, not leave any open vacuum lines. There's no vacuum going to here. Okay, I'll then start it. No vacuum, it still stops and gain the vacuum. So as soon as that solenoid opens, it's stopping. So it doesn't look like it's to do with the actuator, because even with the actuator not in play, it still stops at the same time. I've connected a vacuum pump straight onto the actuator. When I give it vacuum, I can hear movement, but I can't see the, the rod or any linkage, because it's all internal. When I hit the release button, I could hear the air come out. So I think that's okay, unless it's damaged inside. I'll see if I can find a position sensor on this intake runner. If there is one, I can see if I'm getting any change in that when I apply vacuum. I don't think this intake manifold's anything to do with the car cutting out because when I disconnect the multi-plug on it, the connector, it still cuts out at the same time. If I unplug this and give it vacuum direct to it with a vacuum pump to do the same thing that the car would have done, it still cuts out. In fact, what I figured out was when there's vacuum, when there's power applied to this, power and ground to activate the, the solenoid, there is no vacuum coming through here. So I think, you know, I could leave it disconnected and plug up that, but it was still the same. It still cuts out after a few seconds. And because of the only fault code is the crank um, sensor, but it's not a circuit fault code, it's a range and performance. So I've lined this up right down at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that right down there. One second, I'll try and get you to see it. Not down here. Oh no, it's even worse down there. Why can I see it, but you can't? I just can't get it to focus down there. I have to show you. There you go, almost. No, I just can't get it. Hey, I'm not getting it to focus on it. There. Oh, briefly. It's not enough for me to explain what I'm looking at. Okay. Basically, there's a TDC mark down there that I've got it lined up with, and it's exact. And the piston is at TDC if you take out the, the plug and put a, a gauge on it. These links here don't actually line up with anything. And now that I've rotated the engine, they don't line up at all. But I've rechecked the dots. Like there's an arrow and a dot there. And between them, there's seven links between them. And the arrow and the dot, if you include the link that's over the arrow, or the dot, there's nine, but there's seven between them. And that's spot on. And the two lines in the center point towards each other, as close as you can get it when the chain's on a keyway. But what I found out was that this side, I have, the sensor has a hole in it that lines up. You can put a pin in there and line it up with the hole that's exact. And the same on the exhaust side. There's one down there. Doesn't look lined up, it's just the angle I'm at with my camera. But they are lined up. Exact, so it's taken all any doubt out of my mind that the timing's out. So now I'm gonna look for something else. I got in touch with the mechanic that 
worked on this car that changed the two camshaft sensors and the crankshaft sensor. And I took out the new crankshaft sensor because this is the one that it says range and performance. I took out the new one and put in the old one. The old one was a bit messed up because it took some coming out, so he said the pins were bent, but I straightened them up and put it back in. And the car started and ran, I'll show you. See, normally it's cut out by now. And just to be sure that's what it was, I actually took the old sensor back out and put the new one back in and it went back to doing the same as before. Although, when it did cut out with that sensor, I was hearing a lot of noises from here. So, for some reason, the sensor was making this thing was like grunting away as the parts inside were moving back in two. Must be because it didn't make much sense the signal that was coming into it. But with the new, with the old sensor back on, the old crankshaft sensor, it doesn't make those noises here and it's happy running, so I'm guessing that's what it was. So I think the chain being stretched was the problem. And let me put my thing in the center so you can see it there. So, the chain being stretched was a problem, and the sensors being changed didn't help it, it needed a chain. Now I've gone and checked other things because I was getting a signal from the sensor, so I thought I'll rule it out and started looking at other things. Uh, it did lead me to the intake manifold, that are not in there for the swirl flap, although, like I say, for some reason it doesn't do it when it's got the old sensor on, you don't hear noises and groaning coming from that, it's only with the new sensor. I don't know what the difference is, so I'm going to do a cam and crank scope waveform, just so I can keep it as a known good one. Hey, I'm just going to show you something that I've missed uh, to show you before. This top green one, I got that on a 10 volt scale, so it's battery voltage there on the control side of the intake manifold runner vacuum and here's the ground the zero is where that little green arrow is on this so I'd say it's at battery voltage what I didn't notice is it does switch on that does drop to zero when I start it switch the car off start the car see it pulls it down but not as long as it did before and it's back up. You see, before it was switched on for longer, but when it came back up, it um, before the car was cutting out exactly as that one came up. And the only thing I've done is change this bottom one here. That's the crankshaft sensor. The screen. See there? Yeah, that's better. Forget the paper idea. So I'm using the edge of the screen, you can see that one's in line roughly with where that goes to the top. Now I'm going to try and do the same with the old image and see if there's any... And that's the one that I labeled as. There, so I can make this a bit bigger again. I like that. No, I didn't realize I could do that. Let's drag it over. Yeah, there slightly different you see it right there you can clearly see night and day there's a difference and that's just the position that they must have made the sensor incorrectly so it's actually putting it slightly off and stopping the car from running if anybody wants to know the cam and crank correlation when i've got this now i've dragged it over to the edge of the screen this is the good one working it's right there. The second tooth is just on the screen, and the second tooth of there is on the screen too. You see as it gets nearer the top, the line is near the edge. They're basically in line, whereas the bad one, the one that ran and then stopped, was clearly 
there was a gap all the way down, a big gap. So aftermarket parts were faulty. Actually, the all that the car needed was a chain, like I thought when it was rattling, they'll put the chain on. And that turns out to be all it needed. The camshafts that somebody put, the sensors, I mean, that they put on the cam and crankshafts didn't fix it. Actually, if anything, the aftermarket sensor not being correct caused problems and that cost me a few hours of my time to try and figure out what's going on. But I got there. I don't know what I would have checked next if this hadn't started going. I'd probably have gone into checking the relays whilst watching what dropped away, the power, the ground, and the control of the load side. If I was losing anything on each relay at the same time, I think that was my next check. But anyway, I didn't have to go that far. Because it's running, and I'm happy I can go home.